If I'm saying, give me the state and the count for all employees, and I'm not breaking it down by anything, what is the state for all employees that has a salary over 40000 Well, there's different states, right? There might be one employee in Ohio that has a salary over, over 40000 There might be another uh, in, in Minnesota, and another in Pennsylvania, and another in Idaho. I can't give the state that matches up with the count if I'm counting all the employees over 40,000. Because there isn't going to be one state. Or I can't guarantee that there's only going to be one state. There could be multiple states. Therefore, if I don't say to break down the totals by state, how does it know what state to use? Which employee state? It doesn't know. So therefore, it's going to give me an error saying, hey, I don't know what to do with state because it's not in a group by clause. Now, if I say group by state, I'm breaking down my totals by state. So I'll get a total for Ohio, a total for Pennsylvania, a total for Missouri, and so on down the line. All right? And because I'm breaking down the totals by state, I can display the state. Because each group of rows that I'm combining together all have the same state. So I can say, for Ohio, it's five employees. For Pennsylvania, it's eight employees, and so on. Now, if I didn't include state in the list, let me put a little sheet of paper over state. If I did not include state in the list, what I would get is simply a list of numbers and have no idea what state they belong to. So it would show 18, 27, 33. And I'd have no idea if that 18 represented Ohio or New York or Pennsylvania or whatever. So therefore, if I'm breaking down the totals by something, I need the group by clause, and then I need to match whatever's in the group by clause with the list of columns I want to display. So that Everything other than the aggregate functions has to be on the group by clause, and they have to match up like that. In one case, you'll get an error. In the other case, you'll get output that's impossible to interpret. So it's really of no use. Questions about this? You could. All right, um, and, and that's a good observation. Notice that I'm going to I'm going to write another a, example. Select count star average salary from employee, and this would return the number of employees, you know, 150, and their average salary. Something like that. All right. Now, the question is, is why do they use a star with count where here they use a column name? Well, it sort of makes sense if you're talking about doing a mathematical function. You have to say specifically what column you want. Because right? there, be, there, there could be several numeric columns in this table. Right? Uh, there could be the age of the employee. There could be the number of deductions that the employee has. There could be their contribution to the United Way. There could be a number of different numeric fields. So I have to supply for average, for count, I'm sorry, not for count, for average, for sum, for min, for max. I have to supply which column I want. All right? So why don't I do that here? Well, if I'm counting, I'm just counting the number of rows. Right? Therefore, it really doesn't matter which field I count for the most part. There is one subtle exception to that. We'll talk about that in a minute. I could, for example, say select count employee ID. And that would work the same. All right? Because each row has an employee ID. So if I count up the number of employee IDs, that's equivalent to counting up the number of rows. All right, because each employee has an employee ID. The only difference, the only possible um, tricky situation you could get into 
is if a field allows for nulls. You know, let's think of a goofy situation. Um, if I counted the middle initials uh, in, in the table. There's some people that don't have middle initials, right? And they would have a null value for their middle initial. It wouldn't count a null. So it would count how many people had middle initials. And that would, you know, possibly be different than the number of total employees in a database. So, to be on the safe side, people typically say count the number of rows. And the number of rows is represented by, by the asterisk. But again, equivalent to that would be count employee ID because every, I know, by virtue of the fact that uh, the employee ID is a primary key, I know that every employee has, a, has an employee number. So, that's pretty much why. The other ones you have to explicitly say what field you want to operate on. When you count, you could say you're counting anything as long as each row has it. Other questions? All right. Now, let's get into multiple tables. And there's a couple of different ways that you can connect multiple tables. I'm going to talk to start out about what I consider the easier of the two ways. And then we'll probably talk a little bit about the harder of the two ways, um, probably next time or the time after. All right. Let's say that I wanted to show, let me put back up on the screen the tables. Let's say I wanted to show for every employee, oops, for every employee I wanted to show their first name, last name, and the name of the department they worked for. All right. Now that's in two different tables. All right. That's in two different tables. How are we going to join those two tables together? Let's think about if we were doing this manually. If instead of having it in a database, we had like ledger sheets in a book of all our employees and all our department codes. So if I was preparing a list manually, I might look and say, okay, Mike is in department one. What's the name of department one? I look in the department table and find the row that had a, a row ID, uh, a department ID of department one, and I'd match them up. And I'd say, okay, Mike belongs in the sales department. Who's the next employee? John Doe. John Doe, what department? One. Well, John's also in the sales department. Mary Johnson is in department two. Department two is the accounting department. Finally, Sue Jones is in Department 3. Department 3 is the IT department. So, if I were doing this manually, if I had these things on big sheets of paper and I had to prepare a list by hand, what I'd do is I'd look at the employee, I'd find the code of their department, then I'd go and match it up with the code on my department list, my department sheet of paper. And I'd say, okay, Department 47, that's the warehouse department, all right? And I do that for every employee. Now, when you write a SQL statement, you emulate that. You match up the, t the, the fields that the two tables have in common, which more than likely is going to be the foreign key relationship, right? Almost never will it be anything else. But just like with QBE, you still have to define it. So if I wanted to do a query that showed the person's first name, last name, and department ID. I'd have to use both these tables, and I'd have to match up the two tables by saying, I want to match up the department ID in the employee table with the department ID in the department table. All right? So, my select statement would look something like this. And we'll talk about the differences between this and the simple select statement that we went over uh, after we, we sketch it out. So I would say select F name, L name, department name, from 
employee and department. And then I'm going to use the where clause to match up the rows in the one table with the rows in the other table. All right. Remember, the, ma the, the where clause, its purpose is to limit the output. And we're going to limit the output here by matching up the row in the department table with the row in the employee table. So I'm going to say where employee dot department ID equals department dot department ID. So what I've done is I've specified in my where clause that I want to connect these tables using the department ID. So I want to match it up where the employee's department ID equals the department's department ID. Now, let's look at a, at, at a couple of things that, are, that should be different at a glance about this select. All right? Select still select. Okay. We still have a list of column names. All right. But these column names come from a couple different tables, right? The first two columns come from the employee table. The department names comes from the department table. From, and then we list the two tables that we use. Okay? So, if you're going to use a table anywhere in your SQL statement, you have to include it in the from clause. Okay? So, we're using the department table in a couple places in our SQL statement. We're giving the department name and we're using it in the where clause. So, if we're using it somewhere in the SQL statement, we have to include it in the from clause. So therefore I say from employee comma department. So we're using two tables, not one. Now, the last thing that might not be clear is the fact that I say here employee department name, department department name. These are both columns all right, in the table. The employee has a, t has a column called department ID and the department has a, a column called department ID. Think of it this way. The full name of a column in the database is a table name dot column name. All right? That's the full name. Just like you all have a first name and a last name. All right? Now, if someone came in here in the room and said, Mike, raise your hand. That would be pretty obvious. I'd raise my hand because I'm the only Mike in the room. Right? I didn't get confused on names, did I? I'm the only Mike in the room. So if someone walked in the room and said, you know, Mike, I want you to answer this question. Mike, here's $100. Mike, boy, you're in trouble now. All right? It wouldn't be ambiguous at all who they were talking to because there's only one person uh, in the room whose name is Mike. Now let's imagine me and, and Michael Jordan are in the room. All right? And someone comes in and says, Mike, you're a great basketball player. We're both going to look and say, well, thank you very much. You know? All right? Okay, maybe an absurd situation, but uh, Mike, here's $100. We're both going to get up and walk uh, towards it. Why? Because if there's two people that have the same first name, you need to fully qualify the name, right? In other words, if there were two or ten Mikes in this room, you couldn't just say, hey, Mike, because everyone thinks you're talking about them, and there'd be mass confusion, and me and Michael Jordan would be arguing about who the better basketball player is, and a whole ball of wax, all right? So, if there's more than two people in the room with the same name, you better give the first name and last name to be absolutely clear who you're talking about. Now, it's the same thing with databases and columns. I'll give a second for the folks at home to stop laughing about the, the basketball comparison before I proceed. All right. But it's the same thing with database columns. Right? Between the employee table and the department table, there are two columns called department ID. All right? There's a department ID in this table and a department ID in that table. So. If I'm including both of those tables in my select, 
All right? I have to say, if I'm going to refer to the department ID, I have to say which department ID I mean. All right? I can't just say, give me the department ID, because who knows which department ID I want. So, I have to explicitly say, employee dot department ID matches department dot department ID. If I omitted that, it has no idea what to match up with what, and it's going to give me an error. All right? So the rule is that you could always give the column name or the table name and column name. Just like someone could walk in here, even though I'm the only Mike in the room, someone could walk in here and say, hey, Mike Zellers, and I know they were talking about me. All right? So you could always give the table name dot column name. All right? However, if there are more than one columns that have a column name between the tables that you're using, you have to use the full table name dot column name. All right? So I could do this. I could say select employee dot f, f name. Employee dot L name, department dot department name. Even though there's only one column with each of those names. But, it, but you know, I could still say that. However, for department ID, I have to say, I have to say it, and I have to provide the table name because there's two columns that have that name. One last word about, about column IDs is, or I'm sorry, column names, is normally I don't put any spaces in my column names, but I notice a lot of people do. If you do put spaces in either your column or table names, you can include them in square brackets. So like if your employee table is called employee table, you could go like that in your SQL statement. And if you're column name was first name, you could do like that. All right. I normally just, again, sort of an old habit, um, don't put any uh, spaces in the, in the column or table name, so I, I don't have to worry about that. But if you do put those in, then you can enclose them in the square brackets. So let's type in the SQL statement and make sure we get the results that we expected. So let's go here, create, query design, Oops. and I'll go in a notepad and type it in and I'll paste it. Select F name, L name, depart name from employee department where employee dot department ID equals department dot department ID. All right. So that's our SQL statement. If I go in here and copy and paste it in here and run it, I get the first name and last name along with the name of the department from the department table. All right. Now this is analogous to what I showed when we did the QBE, right? You, I remember, remember when I said uh, in the QBE there should be a line between each of the tables? This is like the line between those tables, the matching them up on the where clause. Did you have a question? Yes. Uh, does the order of the keys where clause make any difference? Mm -hmm. 
No, it doesn't. I, I could have written them in the other order and it would work. Just like the order of the tables and the from clause don't really matter as well. Yes? Yes. Yeah, you do. Um, and that's a real good question because it seems kind of dumb. Well, in re well, that's a that's a good point. Let, let's let's. Let's go in and let's create a query using the query by example rule and it knows by default to connect them. And it actually goes and it creates a SQL to join them. All right. The reason you can do that is because the overwhelming majority of the time you want to match up based on the foreign key. However, if the SQL statement did it for you, there'd be no way to override it and have it match some other way. All right, if, if that makes sense. It, it, it's a case of, how can I put this? The reports default to do that, to, to do the join for you, and the queries default to do the joins for you, because again, that's usually how people are going to, to, to match those two tables together. However, if that was built in the SQL, that if there's a foreign key, it automatically matches the tables for you, then you couldn't run a query that did it some other way. Um, now, what would be an example of a query that you would want to run some other way? Um, maybe I want to see, maybe I'm a sales rep, all right? And I want to see all the customers in my city. All right? Maybe I want to see all the customers in my city. So, I might want to join my data or, or something along those lines. I might want to join the data from the sales rep to the customers based on not the sales rep that the customer is assigned to, but based on the city and state. That would be maybe an example of how you'd want to do that, you know, um, for some reason. You might want to give, you know, even though a sales rep isn't assigned to a particular customer, you might want to give him a list of the customers that are in his city, just so he knows in case he runs into one of them, all right, or something like that. So I guess by forcing you to do it, it gives you the ability, if you ever wanted to do it a different way, you could. Whereas if it automatically did it for you, you know. Remember, this is programming. And it, 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 you, you know, it gives you the full run to do whatever you want to do. And the assumption is, is you know what you're doing. So if you match it some other way, you must have done it that, that way on purpose. But yeah, it, it's annoying, but, but you have to do it. Now, let's review a couple of things. All right. First of all, let's review what happens if we don't have the WHERE clause. Okay, so let's go in here and let's eliminate the WHERE clause. All right, so it just says select F name, L name, department name from employee, but there's no WHERE clause. When I run this, what I get is I get way more employees than I have. All right, there's only four employees in my table and there's four departments. So what I get is it matches every employee up with every department. Because I haven't specified how I want to match them up, it's going to do the matching for me. And it matches everything in one table with everything in the other table. All right? That's sort of an extension of the philosophy that if you don't put a WHERE clause, it's going to do everything. If I don't put a WHERE clause when I select from employees, it shows me every employee. If I don't put a WHERE clause in when there's a combination of employees and branches, it's going to show me every combination of employees and branches. So if you ever run a query and you see way more data than you should have, chances are you didn't join. All right? And thing to keep in mind is if I had three tables, I would need to join Table 1 with Table 2, Table 2 with Table 3. So I have to make a chain 
for all of those. So if I have 10 tables, all right, assuming they're all single part keys, I'm going to have nine parts to my where clause. And I'll do an example of that, maybe not with 10, but maybe with three or four. I'll do that uh, in a minute here. All right. The other thing I want to show is what if we don't say employee department ID and department department ID? I said before we had to do that because there is a department ID column in each table and we have to say, hey, we want to match up the one in this table with the one in that table. This will actually give me an error. And it actually gives me an error that's kind of easy to understand. Miracle of all miracles. It says the specified field department ID could refer to more than one table listed in the from clause of your SQL statement. What it's telling me is I can't just say department ID. I have to specify the full name of it. So I would have to say where employee department ID equals department dot department ID. Yeah? Would you get that same error if, uh, say, in two tables you have the same uh, name for the... What? In, in the select field? Oh, yeah. In, in other words, let's say... Let's go and, let's go and add... Let's go and add a state to the department table. Now let me close out of these queries. So let's go add a state to the department table. All right. Um, that really doesn't make sense, but <laughs> we'll do it for the for the heck of it. All right. So there's a state there. So now if I go in and say and create this query. If I were to say, oops. If I were to say select F name, L name, department name, state from employee and department, now that my department table also has a state associated with it, I get the error still. So I would have to say which state I wanted. And let's say I want the department uh, or the employee's state. I'd have to say give me the employee's state. All right, and, and, and again, anywhere in the SQL statement. So if it was in the order by clause, if it was in a group by clause, if it was in a aggregate function, anything like that, we would uh, need to say the, the column name. Likewise, um, we, have to, we have to include the table in the from clause if we're going to use it anywhere in the SQL statement. For example, I could write a statement that looks like this. Maybe I want a list of all the people in the sales department. So I could say something like this. So I'm giving the first name and last name from the employee table and department table where employee, ID, uh, employee department ID equals department department ID and department name equals sales. So I'm not returning anything from the department table, all right, but I'm using the department table elsewhere in the query. I'm using the department table to return only those people that are in sales. So therefore I have to include that department table in there even though it's not part of the select. Some students are under the impression that you'd have to return something from that table to list it. Now, if you're using it anywhere in the, in the select statement, um, you need to include it. 
All right. I will give you a tip in access. In access, if I spell something wrong, or I put an extra E on the end of name, this will happen. You'll get a parameter value. Access is going to assume that if, if it can't find the column in the database, that that's a parameter that you're supposed to enter in. So if you're running a query and you see that, you know that, hey, you, you typed a column name in wrong. I got that column name wrong. All right. Let's go and add another table to our mix. So we have a department table and an employee table. Let's add a branch table. So I'll call it branch ID or branch table. Primary key I'll make branch ID and the branch name. Let's go into the employee then and we'll assign a branch ID also to the employee. I'll create a foreign key. And I'll go in and put a couple branches in. Maybe branch one is Cleveland. Branch two is Elyria. And branch Three is Indianapolis. And then let me go and put some of these employees in each branch. I'll put this guy in three, two, one, three. Okay, so I assign people to branches. <laughs> you know, I was, I was thinking that as I was doing, the, uh, doing this. It's like, I bet I should match that. And it's like, no, no one's paying that close attention. Well, I guess I was proven wrong. Yeah, they have a very long commute. From, from where? Minnesota to? Lorraine. From Lorraine to Indianapolis. I've done that drive, actually. Not on an everyday basis. <laughs> it's actually a nice drive, uh, as long as the weather isn't bad. Uh, and then, then it's not a nice drive. Although I guess you could say that about any drive. It's the flattest land I've seen in my life, though. I mean, what, you know, that, that stretch between Ohio and Indiana, it's like, it's flat. I mean, it really, it looks like, you know, if there were no trees, you could see to the end of the earth. Uh, it seems, anyhow. All right, but I digress. Let's go in and create a query that's going to show for each employee, their first name, last name, the name of the department that they belong to, and then the name of the branch that they belong to. So, we can start out with this. I want to see their first name, last name, department name, and branch name. I'm going to be using the branch table, so I have to include that in my from list. All right. And... I have to add an AND to match up the employee branch ID. I have to match that up with the branch branch ID. And again, for the same reason, I have to say employee.branch ID and branch.branch ID. All right. I say an and because both those matches are going to be true. All right? I have to match up both the employee with the department and the employee with the branch. All right? And now I'm going to run this and we'll see what we get. And we get, sure enough, First name, last name, the department, and the branch to which they belong. Now, a rule of thumb, 
and we'll comment on this, but, but um, first I'll state the rule. Notice I have three tables in my select. That means I'm going to have two things in the where clause to connect those tables together. All right. A rule of thumb is if you have n tables listed in your from, you'll have n minus one thing in your where clause just devoted to joining tables together. That's assuming, by the way, here's the, the catches, here's the fine print. That's assuming we're talking about single part keys. If there were multiple part keys, you'd need to match both parts of the key. But assuming that they're single part keys, if there's three tables, there'll be two parts of the where clause. All right. If there are ten tables, there'll be nine parts to the where clause. Now, the other thing we can do is we can connect this part of the where clause with the where clause to filter out people. So I could actually have a third, fourth piece of the where clause, but the two pieces are to join people together. I'll do an example of that in a minute. Now, if I omit and I forget to join two of the tables together, what I get is sort of like I got before, where it matches up every person with every branch. So I have actually 12 rows here. All right. The four employees are matched with each of the three branches. So first employee is matched with branch one, two, and three. Because I'm matching the employee in the department correctly. So it doesn't match up all those combinations, but it does do all the combinations between um, employee and uh, branch. And if I left off both parts of the where clause, or all parts of the where clause, let me do this. I'll just select, I'll eliminate the where clause. Then I'm going to get, and we can calculate this, 4 times 4 times 3. So that's 16 times 3. I should get 48 rows returned. And sure enough, 48 rows. Because this is every combination of them. So it's important to get those where clauses straight because, again, that's what limits it to only the proper matches. Now, the last thing I want to do is I want to show that we can combine this with other stuff. All right? So, for example, I could add to the where clause not only to match up the employee with the branch and the department, but to filter out and only show those people whose salary is greater than 40000 And then I can say order by, let's say, last name, first name. And what this will do is this will give me ah, got an argument popped up. What I do, I put first name. Aren't you glad I do these little things to reinforce the concepts? All right, there we go. So these two employees are the two that make over 40,000. And they're sorted by last name and then by first name. Now, there's only two, so it might not be obvious, but Johnson does appear before Jones. All right. And it shows for those two employees, it shows their respective branches and departments. Now the real fun starts because we know, well, maybe 80% of everything you can know about SQL selects. There might be an extra 20%, but... What we haven't done is we haven't done any of the real crazy combining yet. Because, for example, we could see um, the average salary by department name by branch name. So we could see the accounting department in Cleveland, what their average salary is, the accounting department in Elyria, what their average salary is, and so on. 
and that will save until next time. Uh, next week what we're going to do is we will practice what we've learned, all right, because I don't expect just by hearing me say this once or a few times in class for you to really get it. So we'll practice what we've learned and apply it to cases. Then we'll talk about some um, little more advanced topics, at least introduce some of the more advanced topics. And then we'll talk about um, um, the, the, the statements that actually maintain the database, the insert, update, and delete statements. We're not going to stress those. Actually, those are simpler than the select because they, they do pretty much just one thing, whereas selects are very flexible. Um, we'll probably have another word or so about views, because we did talk briefly about views when we were talking about queries, uh, but it might, it might be good to review that uh, uh, again. Any questions? All right. We'll see you in lab.